anti-aliasing. What is it? When should you use it? Should you use it? Let's find out. Okay, anti-aliasing. It's really not that hard, but there's a few things that you need to understand about it. Um, we will go through and pick a brush here. Just about every brush has the option to select on the tool property whether you want anti-aliasing. And in Clip Studio Paint, it has different degrees of anti-aliasing. So to really see what's going on, you'll have to zoom in. So we're going to zoom in really close here. We're going to start with no anti-aliasing. This is none. All right. So you'll select it in Photoshop, if I remember correctly, only has you can toggle it on or off. Um, when we get a brush here, you'll see if I draw a line and I zoom in how pixely it is. Okay, so I'll rope off an area. So let's try to fill this with the paint bucket. So with the paint bucket, I'll grab a red and you'll see how nicely that fills in. Nice and simple. So let's undo that and let's go up a notch. Say uh, a week. This is called weak and then medium and then strong. Again, this is specific to Clip Studio Paint, so I don't know, I'm pretty sure Photoshop does not have degrees of it. But if we go in here, oh, let's get black so you can see. You'll see there's a little bit grayed out, right? You see it's it's kind of trying to simulate a more natural edge around the line. So now when we go to fill it in, you know, I'll say no area scaling. It's gonna stop right on the edge because these aren't black, they're gray. They're, so you, you can really see it here. Like you've seen like a gradient at the, from pixel to pixel. So it's adding gray pixels around the edge to soften the line. So let's undo that. Let's go up the scale here. And in just a minute, I'll show you what uh, the different applications for uh, this are. So let's go up to uh, medium. You can get the idea. Oh, look, that's even really blurrier and we'll fill that in and it's about the same still not going edge to edge and then of course when we go to strong really blurry try to fill that in an even stronger line all oh, there's a complete circle in there so what this does is when we're drawing if we do a no anti-aliasing and I'm in here and I'm drawing you'll see it's a very crisp it's very sharp especially for a comic book if we are going to reduce the size and send it off to a colorist and they're going to do fills. Uh, this will work really well. I mean, if we're zooming out, but when you zoom in, it looks very pixely along the edge. But if you see some of my other tutorials where I talk about going through and filling in, this is where we run into something. We run into, if I'm going to go through and fill in, uh, say on a different layer, this character here, and I want to do it quickly, well, that's no problem. I can drag all the white areas, it'll fill it in nice and neat. So I've gotten this very hard edge here, and I, the benefit is I can do easy fills. However, if we get rid of this guy and we go up, and just to demonstrate it, I'll go up to medium in the um, anti-aliasing setting, because you can kind of get the idea. What this does is it'll let you, it, it feels more natural, honestly. It feels like it's very smooth from, you know, zooming in and out. Um, it's picking up more of the pressure and translating light pressure into gray. What the no anti-aliasing will do will just drop off. If I do this hard line and there it's gone. See, it kind of, you get that kind of boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Technical term, boop, boop, boop. And then if I do it with same thing, it'll carry that line out more naturally, more feathering. You can't, it's hard to get good feathering with no anti-aliasing. Of course, the trade-off is that when I draw my face here and I go to fill this thing in, what's up with his, his mouth there? But when I go to fill this thing in this way, oops, I left an opening, so that's going to fill in everything. But you can even see what it did, right? It's going to be very hard. I've got to go back over this if, if this was a real, you know, real thing, real drawing. So another thing you'll run into if you want to do color holds easily, if I want to know I want to select my lines and fill them in, I really need to do uh, no anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing should be off. Because then I can have this line, I can go up to my selection tool, I can select it, 
and then I can go on to a, a layer on top and say maybe I want that line you know red and then go in and hit some, so I can get that hit that whole line when I have a strong anti-aliasing I need it to be a black line and I need to be on the right layer um, and I select it what's going to happen is it's going to select is see it's not going to select the whole line it's only going to select the color I selected on the black so when I do a color hold on it and then I deselect it I've got this see that just doesn't look good it looks looks like some, like Microsoft paint or something so that is the trade-off you kind of have to have some foresight into what you're doing if you think you're going to want to do color holds easily um, then you're going to need to switch anti-aliasing off now, one of the biggest applications, I go back and forth, but when I'm drawing, right now I'm drawing on an XP pen on my computer. When I'm drawing on my Surface Pro, I have to switch anti-aliasing on. I have to have it on some way to, in order to even really function and get a good drawing, just because of the pressure sensitivity of it. So that is the basics of anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing off means a crisp line, easy fills, easy selection. Uh, if it's alias, it's going to have that gray area around. So I hope that helps. Basic introduction. Let me know in the comments if you're running into any problems. If there's any, anything else in Clip Studio Paint you want me to cover, I'm going through a series and trying to get uh, more, build up a library of just quick tutorials for people, especially people getting started with it. So hope this helps. See you next time. Hey, thanks for clicking on this video. Be sure to hit subscribe and hit the bell to receive all notifications because just hitting subscribe doesn't mean anything.